Hello and welcome to Hard Talk India. No one believed she would until she actually did. Her election as the Chief Minister of the Indian State of Rajasthan has taken the country by surprise. And not surprisingly, the Indian press simply hasn't stopped writing about her. Well, here today to talk about herself, her government and its priorities is the new Chief Minister of Rajasthan, Vasundra Rajay Sindhya. First of all, congratulations, Chief Minister, on your amazing victory. As Thank I you, said, Karan. Thanks. Everyone said that it was a big surprise. Were you also taken by surprise? No, not really. Um, we'd been working at it for a year. <clears throat> the election process, as you know it, wasn't uh, the way we knew it. We knew it for almost 12 months before, because we were on the ground working for 12 months. And uh, Except that my, you were my campaign actually started 12 months before. But you were very reluctant when you were offered the job of party president in Rajasthan, and there was a point when you didn't even want to stand as an MLA. Well, let's just say that uh, it's a daunting task. For somebody who had not been out in that, well, in the field, as far as my constituency was concerned, was fine. But Rajasthan was not my constituency. It was not just eight MLA districts. It was 32. So you were scared you were biting off more than you could chew? Well, I'm sure everybody, when you go new into a field, would feel that way. So I would really not be telling the truth if I said that I wasn't daunted by it. I was. How much of your success is because Pramod Mahajan steered your campaign? Let me just say that everybody had their piece in this very, very big campaign. I don't think that I could have done very much without the help and the support that I got from Pramod. And I really do believe uh, it was very unstinting, it was well given. And uh, his team of people were, worked solidly with us. But so did our workers, so did the people. I'm glad you said so did our and, workers. Uh, How much of your victory is because of the wider support you got from the RSS and the Sangh Parivar? You know, you would have surprised me if you hadn't asked me this question. I have to tell you that it is a, <coughs> it's a large organization that is all of them put together. And I would like to say very clearly over here that I uh, would not like to separate one or the other. We had lots and lots of people in the field, whether they were people, MLAs, workers from Maharashtra, whether it was the Sangh people, whether it was the workers of the BJP of that area, and whether it was from the neighboring states, the people who Let had come me in. Quote you. Let me just tell you very clearly that there was a huge support base for us from our workers and also from the people. And that's the You're judiciously the avoiding video. using the word RSS, which is interesting. Let me remind you what Acharya Dharmendra of the VHP said to the Indian don't, Express don't. on the 13th of December, five days after your swearing-in. He said, their victory is the victory of Hindu ideology. They have won with such a big majority because of the work put in by us and our affiliated organizations. He claims credit for it. I'm really delighted that people from all walks of life have claimed credit to my victory because that's how I would like it. I would like every single person from the smallest to the tallest to actually involve but themselves in this way. But do you give credit to the RSS and to the VHP? I give credit to uh, my line of thinking. I was very clear from the very beginning that we were going to work with development as our agenda because the Raj Rajasthan's development meant a lot to all of us and to the people of the You know state. what the press says? If the people are hungry we are not going to be successful in anything we do. Do you know what the and press Which is the reason, the Karan, you have to finish. Let me finish. And which is one of the reasons why I do very strongly believe that the people of Rajasthan supported us. But I went across all kinds of caste barriers. I went across religious barriers. And we talked about Rajasthan and what we're going to do. No doubt it. you did, Chief Minister. But let's come back to the claims that the RSS and now the VHP are making that they are responsible. <coughs> the press say that 60 out of your 120 MLAs are committed workers of the RSS. They say that that is a higher percentage in Rajasthan than in any other BJP government in the country. I don't agree with that, uh, Karan. I don't know how many people would be committed workers. I'm sure it's not something that one can uh, sit back and count. But these are all BJP primary members now. Isn't that why the Sang Sang Chalak of the RSS, K. S. Sudarshan, held a special session to teach your MLAs and ministers the art of governance, and he did it within 48 mm. hours <laughs> of your victory? All. Not at all. It wasn't within 48 hours of my victory. It was many days after that. And I would like to very much say to you that we are an organization that deals very happily with each other. I go to the Sang uh, uh, organization. I've been going since I've been very small. And so do other members. Except but for it the doesn't fact mean that this One moment. But it doesn't mean anything. But we have has, a very, very, one me. moment, we have a very good setup, but we are very clear about where the organizations are going, uh, what work I am supposed to do, what work they do. Fields are all very clearly Except divided Except for up. the fact that the Sang Sang Chalak didn't hold a 
guidance course on the art of governance in Delhi or Ahmedabad, in Bhopal or Punjab. He only held it in Jaipur. Why Jaipur? He didn't hold it in Jaipur, actually. It was Kota. But why in Rajasthan? And uh, <coughs> when they come to Kota, when they came to Kota, they invited whoever the members were. I personally wasn't, uh, wasn't there. But uh, all those people who wish to go are welcome to go. In fact, so let me did. quote to you what Praveen Togadia told the Hindustan Times on the 15th of December. He said, Rajasthan is the laboratory of Hindutva. Gujarat has become the graveyard of Hindu se of secular ideology and we will extend it to Delhi via Jaipur. Wasn't that why the Sag Sang Chalak was teaching the art of governance to your new MLAs because he wanted to ensure this process continued? I really don't seem to agree with you because the kind of threat perception that you seem to see uh, or, or see behind this really doesn't exist. Rajasthan is very clear, it's always been very secular and I really can't help what other people say. So you dissociate yourself from Praveen Togadia's remarks? I have absolutely, how can I associate with myself with a remark of his when I never even knew when he said it? The intriguing thing is as you <coughs> said a moment ago yourself, I really can't take uh, credit or discredit for what you have to say about any of these things, can I? But the intriguing thing as you said and a moment ago yourself is that you didn't attend that particular crash course organized by the Sangh Sang Chalak on the Art of Governance. You absented yourself. That was deliberate, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it was really, it was something that one has to look behind because there must be something terrifying behind it. No, it wasn't really, because we were all asked. Whoever felt like coming went. Most of your I ministers went, most of your MLAs went, the chief minister didn't. Why? Oh, I don't know, actually. I didn't think it was that important. You're I mocking the question, but is that not because you don't know how to answer no, it? No, that was not the question. I didn't, uh, there was no compulsion to go, Karan. People who were invited, if they felt like going, could go. Chief Minister, the intriguing I thing is not I just that you didn't go, else. but you've launched a hundred day <coughs> sweeping program Is this an inquisition or are you not interested? At all, not at all. I'm trying to establish the nature of the relationship well, you have and the lines that you're drawing. Well, you have been able to do it for the last drawing. ten minutes. Because you're not Because I'm making it very clear to you that as far as I'm concerned, my agenda is developmental. Now, would you like to get off this topic or do you want to stay on it? No, I and want very much to pursue minutes. development, but I want to yes. pursue it by pointing out to you that when you launched your 100-day sweeping reforms, and it's a 100-day program that has actually been very impressive, the one thing you didn't do yes. was to lift the ban on tridents and rules which the RSS has been calling for. You are so, so predictable. I knew you'd ask this question. What about as answering far as it? I'm concerned, I'm very happy to answer it for you. As far as I'm concerned, when this issue came up at the time of the Congress, I don't really think that it should have come up anyway. Because people are free to practice in a democratic state, their religions in any way they want it, as long as they do not disrupt the law and order situation of any state. I believe that the Trishul situation was something that nobody even knew about in Rajasthan, actually came into focus when the ban got put. And it was put because uh, the Congress believed that they would be able to dangle a bait to which I should rise and then maybe the, the, the election but would why become haven't you Hindu. Lifted well, let's the just finish it and then let, uh, let's have the election move towards the Hindutva way. And if it moved the Hindutva way, they would be vindicated. However, as far as I was concerned, I still believe that everyone's free to practice whatever they want to do. But if there's anything that's going to be disruptive, there will be a problem. But the interesting thing is your closest <coughs> supporters in the VHP and the RSS want the ban lifted. Your new party president, Lalit Kishore Chaturvedi, when he took over, actually said it would be. The next day he had to publicly go back. You haven't done what your supporters are asking for. I'm intrigued. Why? Because I'm going to run the government, which is going to be good for the people. That's a very important statement. So you see, no, I haven't said retaining anything. the ban I will as not, in public interest. No, I do not say whether I'm going to retain it. I didn't say whether I was going to remove it. Let I said that I would do what is good for the people. Let me give Have you I said that I'm going to remove it or that I'm not? We'll leave it at the that. The inference, of course, is something there is that no everyone inference will draw. At all. Let me give you another example. Mm. Your party manifesto committed you to an anti-conversion bill. You've had sweeping reforms. You've taken all sorts of action in terms of jobs, in terms of building roads, but you've done nothing <coughs> about this anti-conversion bill. Again, something the RSS and the VHP want and you're not acting. Oh, it's really awful, I must say. But as far as I'm concerned, you've given me, um, it's not 40 days as yet. I must be really superwoman if you think that I can manage to get everything done with the same kind of attention within this very short period of time. I'm going to have very little left to do in the next four years or it's four and a half years. It's just as the far priority as I'm concerned, and the speed that I'm questioning. Good. I'm You're glad hastening you slowly that. over here and deliberately so. How do you know it's deliberate? 
And how do you know that I'm not hastening because over the areas that I am wanting to? Because I believe, as I said, I've set an agenda and I'm following that. Because Uma Bharti in Madhya Pradesh, where she promised a ban on car slaughter, didn't even wait for the assembly to pass it. She did it by ordinance. You've acted very differently. I've acted very differently from everybody over a long period of time. I've taken a long time to choose my ministers. I've taken a long time to expand my cabinet. I'm taking a long time to move my bureaucrats. I'm taking a long time to do everything but the agenda. And I move that fastest and possibly faster than most of the Chief others. Minister, what I'm hinting so at... So I have a different way of handling things, Karan, and I believe every uh, person who is in government or out has a different way of uh, approaching their problems or approaching, as I said, governance. And I'm happy to do it in the way I am. And uh, I think you actually should compliment me. Uh, in fact, I'm coming around in a sense to doing that because what <coughs> I was hinting at when you were losing your temper and Did becoming irritable Did was that it? there is a Did line, yes, because there is a line that you are drawing in Rajasthan and behind that line is the sentiment unexpressed, thus far will Hindutva and RSS forces go and no further. I refuse to commit myself to any of this. It's embarrassing for you to do that, I understand. It's not at all embarrassing look for me, at but as I said, are you interested in knowing about the state? Are you interested in the direction that we're going in? Or are you just going to insist that certain facts, as you see them, are going to be uh, put on the table? I'm and pointing only at three facts. The fact that you didn't attend the Sarstan Chala <coughs> You seminar. didn't know that. I have just told you that. No, in fact, I did know it, but you also told me that as well. But I did know it because it's, it's been in the press. The fact that you didn't rush to lift the ban on Trishuls, the fact that you haven't rushed to impose an anti-conversion bill on all three fronts, I you've drawn a neat line in the sand to say to Hindutva forces, thus far in Rajasthan, I have said no nothing further. of the sort. I have said nothing of the sort, and I refuse to be boxed in on any one of these issues. I am simply taking my time about issues. I will weigh them up, and then I will take action on them if they're good for the people. Something that you said a moment ago that you were deliberately taking your time over was expanding your cabinet. You've mm -hmm. been a chief minister now for seven weeks. You were sworn in on the 8th of December. You have a <coughs> cabinet of nine. The law permits you 21 more. Can't you find them or don't you need them? Aren't I? I'm really happy to hear that. Because when we had more, you'd be complaining like you did about poor Mulayam. And now you're complaining because I have a small cabinet. I was uh, sure that you would probably pat me on the back and say, well done. You're one of the few reformists who started with a small cabinet. And uh, that's how I intended to start, because I looked for regional balances. I looked for people who were very com uh, competent. I have a small and neat cabinet just now that have been able to handle their subjects in the, par in the Vidhan Sabha very, very well. And I, as I said to you, believe in taking my time, looking at merit, finding it, and then putting it where it is. Except for the fact that as <coughs> Chief Minister, you're today handling 58 government departments that don't just include home and finance, but you also happen to be handling Portfolios like planning, rural development, law, tourism, family planning, agriculture and health. You forgot, it's not 58, it's 60, actually. In which case, you call yourself superwoman. Uh, because if you're not well, superwoman, this is a recipe for bad governance. Isn't it? We'll see. You have to only give me my chit after five years. You really can't do it in three and a half, three, not even three, You two intend months. to carry the burden of 60 <coughs> government portfolios all, for five not full years? Not at all. Not at all. Do you know what I'm looking forward to having more company. When will you have that? I was waiting for you to ask that question. Well, let's see. At this moment in time, I'm going to be sitting down to think about regional balances. I'm thinking about caste. I'm thinking about bringing new people in. Uh, and now there's elections, so there's going to be a certain amount of calibration. And after I finish doing that, if we think it's a good idea, we might do it before the election, we might even do it after the election. So you might not have a, a new membership of your cabinet <coughs> for another three or four months? I may, I may not. Do you know what the press is saying? They're saying that this is another sign that she's resisting pressure from the RSS. Ooh. The press claims that the <laughs> RSS have asked for three-fourths of the portfolios in your government and the only way you can hold them off is not to expand the cabinet. I really wouldn't look at the shadows. Please, Karen, let's move on and let's get on to the things that are we good We have in front of us here in this studio a chief minister who is part of the wider Sangh family but is drawing a clear line in the sand to those very Hindutva forces and saying thus far no further. It's embarrassing for you to accept it. I certainly am not embarrassed at all. For themselves. I am very clear about the fact that I have grown up in the Sangh Parivar. I have never had a problem with that. But as I said to you, I make up my mind as I go along what is good for the people and that's how I will and carry And I will on. not do what you they tell will, me no, to do no, simply, be, all, simply because you're saying it. Nobody that's simply said it. Nobody simply said it.
When you came to power on the 11th of December, you addressed your officials and you pointed out that the state's coffers were almost virtually empty and that resource generation was precipitously small and low. Just how bad is the situation you've inherited? Yeah, I've inherited a very, very precarious situation because uh, <coughs> everything, I mean, there's a huge debt and uh, revenue receipts and fiscal receipts are pretty bad shape and uh, we don't have too much investable fund. Is this why you needed so a thousand crore loan from the center? I haven't taken a thousand crore loan from the center. Papers say you've asked for one, the Financial oh, Express in particular. I have taken a 500 crore borrowing. I have uh, taken some money which was owed to us from the electricity department. I have taken something for um, water and for our canal systems. But the bottom that line comes is that to, you need funds. That comes to almost 1200 crores of rupees. So our plan has been extended with that. But, the, bo but the bottom line as is that you're short of funds in we, Yes, absolutely are short of funds and we are going to take care of this by aggressively going out to uh, raise our revenue receipts um, through our administration. We're also closely going to monitor it. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm also looking for investment from outside. I believe that it's time for public-private partnership. I believe it's time for us, the government, actually to become a facilitator and a catalyst to step back and to bring in people who are good, who are, understand their business and get on with and the developmental work. You, can I ask and I also Chief have Minister. one more thing up my sleeve, and that is the huge Rajasthani community, which is outside of the state, in the, let's say in, in, in India as well as outside uh, in foreign countries. The diaspora, I believe as they that, call it. Yes, the diaspora, as they call it. And as far as they are concerned, they have been extremely successful, uh, whether they've been outside the country or within the country. And I'm asking them to come back and help us develop Rajasthan. The one point that you've made is that the state is short of funds, it needs to generate resources. In which case, explain this to me. Why have you unleashed a tax bonanza? Far from harnessing new resources, you're driving your already empty coffers towards bankruptcy. No. Whatever I've done, I've worked within my budget. All of it has been taken care of. None of this is outside my budget. All of this has been set within a time frame, and by the 31st of March, I'm putting it on the web. You have so it will be very clear to everybody. We, don't, we won't even need to argue about it. But you've restored bonuses <coughs> where they were cut. That's going to cost you 200 crores, I according to the press. I haven't restored bonuses. Diwali bonuses? I have not restored. What I have is within my budget. It's been in the press that you've restored the Diwali bonuses? I will do it from the next year onwards, and I have budgeted it. So not from this year? No. That is a step that will happen? 31st of March, no. That's, we'll go into the 31st and of March. And that is also true, next therefore, step. when you say that you scrapped professional tax, that would also happen after 31st of yes, March. After 31st of March. And the same thing to do with the reduction of entertainment tax. Yes. In other words, in this fiscal year, when you're short Which of funds, exactly none of these happens. measures will actually happen. These are not happen. going to hurt the, uh, the state. All of it is going to be, but it's all budgeted. All of it has been taken care of. And we're putting it on the web so that... Uh, so that uh, experts like you can take it apart and Why have a look at it carefully then and then did come you not back to correct me the impression in the press that you were offering tax reductions and other SOPs as a way of buying votes and I can't for your do party. I really can't do everything. I can't stop the press from doing what they think is best. They have views, they have opinions, and they have ideas, and they're free to. Except for the fact that you're a new chief minister, very dependent upon the impression the press creates. And if the press is creating the impression, particularly with wrong facts, then surely it's incumbent on you to correct it. Let me be very clear here. I came to power without the help of the press. If I had left it to the press, I wouldn't be sitting in front of you. So I believe that whatever I have got today has happened thanks to the people, thanks to my party, thanks to some people who stood by me, and thanks purely to my hard work, which has taken me 12 very, very grueling months to get where I am. You sound and the press you... worked very hard to see that I didn't get where I did. And Are you I disenchanted proved, with the press? I, no, not at all. They did their job. I did mine. But I'm glad to see that I succeeded. And as I said to them afterwards, I, there's no hard feelings because suppose, suppose you had said nice things about me. Maybe we'd have got lulled into a sense of uh, false security. And maybe we wouldn't have walked as hard. But you're as also hard. saying, I and couldn't therefore, care less what the press say. I've no. lived without them and succeeded without them, and I will continue to succeed despite them. That's what you say. You say that about the RSS. You say, you say, you say. I don't say. You say. But you're in a very interesting I, situation. Hmm. I've given you credit for a line that many people will admire that you've drawn in the sand, which the press hasn't picked up as yet, and you don't wish to have that credit. I, the press are blaming you for sops that you're giving, which you've just pointed out to me, are not true. And you're also not concerned about that. Surely indifference is not I'm the right response. I'm sorry to say I'm just not that I'm concerned or not concerned. I, please don't put words into my mouth, Karen. Allow me to, to uh, say what I have to say. Why do you want to praise it? 
Let me put you something else that the press are conveying as an image about you. They say mm. very clearly that the chief minister has taken to religion and become superstitious. She refused to move into a official residence during the inauspicious month of Malmas, and she's conducted the prayers in 101 shrines to ward off bad karma. Let me make one thing very clear to you. I have always been very religious. It's not something that has happened overnight. I do believe, and I am superstitious. I can't do very much about that. So I'm afraid I am going to continue in that fashion. Malmas is a, in the Hindus, not a month in which any good work is done. So I have tried to keep Malmas on the side. But as far as thanks to the religious shrines are concerned, yes, I did. All round Rajasthan on the 30th, 31st, and 1st of December and January, there were prayers offered at Muslim dargahs, at Hindu shrines, at Sikh uh, gurdwaras, at Sindhi temples, at the churches, from the people of Rajasthan to say a very, very big thank you. All our workers went but to But you each accept temples. that you're superstitious? I believe that the temples, when they were looked after, create an atmosphere which is good for the people. The blessings of God are always good for the people. And because of that, maybe it will ward off evils like, uh, yes, I, you could say that I am a Let happy me. mixture of modernity and a certain amount of traditionalism. You're also a happily candid person who's quite happy to admit to facts. Outlook Saptahik says that she takes her morning prayers so seriously that when she can't complete them at home, she does it on board her helicopter. I do. I do. If I am not able to finish them, I should be able to finish them. It takes me 45 minutes every day. But if I am late, I do them in the helicopter or I do it in the car. The magazine says that she's become dependent upon daily astrological advice from a certain Pandit Kedar Sharma. Oh, come on, Karan. I haven't seen Mr. Kedar Sharma for a while, but that's besides the point. But should I the mean, chief get minister serious? be so dependent let's upon get superstition? Serious. No, that's no, no, the no, point no, no, I'm no. making. Let's Is it serious. fitting for you to be no, so no, no, dependent? No, no, let's get serious. Now, you know, you're really, uh, there's, there's a limit to it. Just because I'm a woman doesn't mean that you have to try and bring down this, uh, you know, to any level. No, you Chief have to Minister, understand. Chief Minister, it has you have nothing to, understand. to do with being yes, a woman. It's to do with the question, no, is I, it fitting no, it is not for the right. head of government I think to it's be important. so publicly dependent on superstition? I am sorry, I'm not publicly dependent. I'm very clear about the fact that my religious uh, duties, I do them every morning. I think people go to church, they go to their dargahs. I do my prayers every morning. I don't think everyone, anyone should misconstrue that. And I have no hesitation in saying that I do. The press are beginning to. I have no problem about that. It's the Hindi press that gets read most widely in your state? I have state? absolutely no problem about that either. We've got very widely read right through the year. They used to say of you that as a former Maharani, she doesn't have a feel of the popular pulse. You clearly proved them completely wrong when you won an unexpectedly large majority in Rajasthan. Today, don't you run the danger. Because of your own candor, because of your own frankness, that they're going to turn around and say, the chief minister is far too superstitious to be rational. They're absolutely not. Because they know she is not superstitious enough to be rational. She is not crazy to be that superstitious. In other words, there's another line that you clearly draw. No, thus I'm not far clearly drawing any line. Please don't put words into my mouth. Let me put it like this. Let people see it and decide for themselves. Why should you draw lines for anyone? Let me put it like this. Many people get the impression that she's a tougher lady than she lets on. That was certainly the case when you won an astounding majority last December. Is that also going to prove to be the way you handle your allies, both within the Sankh Parivar and your own party Why don't you within wait the BJP? And see? So what I'm asking you is, are you tougher than you look? Why don't you wait and see? I'd you like you to make that decision, because you're a guy who makes a lot of decisions. You don't let it come from anywhere around. So I would suggest that you just wait for six months and find out for yourself. You're deliberately taking your time <laughs> over your actions, over your cabinet, over the things that you do. You're even taking your time over which bit of your manifesto you fulfill when. This is clearly well thought out strategy, isn't it? Well, you can take it both ways. If you looked at it from this side, you'd say, well, it's very foolishly done. If you looked at it from that side, you could say she's terribly clever and she's handled it in a much better fashion. I'll leave you to find that out. Six months from now, you'll be able to at least form some opinion. You like being an enigma. Do I? You like leaving people in mystery and doubt because you've worked out for yourself. That's one no, way of ensuring you That's what you say. I'd like the others to tell me that. Maybe we could have a poll on this one. If people were to turn around and say that Vasundra Rajasindha is a surprisingly different person to what she thought or we thought she was, would you take that as a compliment? The only people who know what I'm all about is the people at the grassroots level. 
because they are the only ones that we deal with directly and it's a contact straight from the heart. It's a spiritual compact and that's the reason why they knew and I knew that we would be in government together at the end of the year and, and no the, one else knew. And they are the only ones that you actually care about. they are the about. only ones that I actually care about. Chief Minister, a pleasure having you Thank on you. Hard Talk India. Thanks. Thank you.